Hey, Cotton, want to know something cool? Yeah, I mean, I suppose so. Never say no to free information. If you put your arm around your other arm and then squeeze really hard, it's like you're hugging yourself. That does not seem like much of a secret. It was the secret to not crying myself to sleep at night. I am very sorry. Ladies, gentlemen, and ARC searchers of all ages, welcome one and all to exactly what you've been looking for. Uh, the ARC. There it is. Stop looking for it. Okay, that out of the way. You're interested in Lost Ark, right? You want to play it at launch. Maybe you got to play in the beta. Maybe you didn't play in the beta and just want to be ready for when the game fully releases. Well, today I've got some answers to questions that you didn't even know that you had. Today I bring you the 10 things that you didn't know you could do in Lost Ark, in no particular order. Starting off then, we have moving faster than walking speed. You can walk straight in a direction, is sure, but you may wonder if there's a way to move even faster than that. And well, there is no sprint button per se, but you can go faster. Press your dash button, spacebar by default, on cooldown. This isn't just a way to avoid moves in combat, this actually makes you faster. There is a slight startup to the animation, but the actual dash is way faster than walking, and on average you can definitely see that the dashing player will always be a little bit faster. It isn't a crazy amount faster, but when it comes to traversal in an MMO, a trick like this can save you hours over the course of your playtime. And even better that it works exactly the same on mounts as it does on foot, so spam that dash on cooldown for maximum speed. Next up, we have tricks. Do the roar. You know what anything? How about one of those famous Shrek roars? Do the roar. And I mean specifically mount tricks. In the beta, we were given a load of the paid currency for free just to check out the shop a little bit. And one of the things on offer was a mount that is just a cloud. What you probably don't know about this game if you haven't been on one of these mounts yourself though, is that it replaces your action bar with a new one full of neat little tricks that you can do on the mount. You can do a flip, you can shoot out little thematic fire Fireworks, and I imagine each mount will have their own little set of things, especially the ones that you pay for. So, well, yes, there are going to be a lot of paid mounts in this game. At least they are more interesting than just a purely visually different horse. Thirdly, never sell your old gear, by which I mean don't sell it in one piece. Dismantle it first, and it will break down into a couple of materials, which will then be worth more than the armor piece itself is. I know, it sounds weird, but a sword is for some reason worth less than handing a merchant a blade and a hilt separately. I won't question their tactics as long as they give me their goddamn silver. Fourth, this one isn't the hardest to work out, but it isn't explicitly told to you at any point, and is a really big deal, actually. There are specialization presets in your skill tree. You have two unlocked by default, and can buy more with the in-game currency. But if you think of this as your single target spec, and then your AoE spec, then this sort of works wonders, it's real good. That is how I've built myself, and while leveling, if I know I'm about to face a big singular guy, I switch to the single target spec. If I know I'm going to cleave through a million little guys, I'll sit in my AoE spec for a while. The only constraint to this system is you cannot switch presets while an ability is on cooldown. You can switch in combat though, just not with any skills on cooldown. That makes all of this a very interesting concept to mess around with, and and more than worth putting your time into to set it up the way that you would like to have it. Fifth, there are two kinds of healing potion, instant use chunk of HP refilled, and these short bursts of HP refilling over time. In endgame content, you cannot use the bursts over time heal, so use that one as much as possible during leveling so that you can save your more potent potions for later on. I love the words potent potions back to back. That said, while leveling, you'll find yourself a town called Lake Bar and have trade skills unlocked. If you make a point of working on your foraging skill, this is actually how you make your own potions long term. If you keep up with this trade skill, even if you avoid every other trade skill, you should have a nice healthy supply of, well, supplies. Next up, we have pets. When you arrive at the first main hub of Lost Ark, you'll be given a guide quest. Guide quests are a type of quest that is cross-character and affects your entire account. This quest is to introduce you to the pet system of the game and give you your first pet. If you are trying to level at max speed, you are probably only doing the main quest of the game, and so this can really easily just slip right past you. However, you should make a point of doing specifically this quest. This is your only free pet, at least as of where I am, in the game, and pets are responsible for auto-loot in this game. Without pets, you have to manually loot everything. With pets, they'll loot it for you. It's taken care of for you. Thus, a free pet is a more than worthy stop along your leveling journey. 
After that comes controllers. This may be weird to you, especially if you've played a lot of MMOs in the past, but not only does Lost Ark work with controllers, but it actually works really, really well with them. Like quite possibly the best controller functionality that I have personally experienced in an MMO, to the point that for a melee class, it almost feels more responsive and sensitive to me, to me, don't complain, it's to me I'm talking about here. Obviously you will still have some blips every once in a while where something happens that wouldn't happen on keyboard and mouse, but you have more control over your movement with a joystick instead of point and click movement by a pretty large degree. You just have to consistently think about it instead of clicking and then forgetting. Aim is a bit harder. I haven't tried this at all with a ranged class, but it doesn't really take a genius to guess that it won't be anywhere close to as effective to play a ranged class with a controller, considering, you know, how aim-based a ranged class is compared to the movement-heavy nature of melee. Number eight is try new abilities. No matter what the description specifically says, every new ability you get while leveling is probably good for something. There are three main types of content in this game. Single target focusing one enemy, area of effect attacks against massive groups, and PvP. A move that is bad for a single target might be insanely good for AoE, or it could have incredible PvP potential as a CC, or something along those lines. Every move is good for something, so really have a look into the things that you unlock. When you get to level 25 in the game and reach Lutera Castle, you'll unlock PvP, and along with it, you will unlock the Book of Coordination. This is where you set your builds for PvP, end game boss hunts, and end game raiding. Once you are level 25, you can set an entire fully completed build, because every time you do PvP, you will scale to that build and be on a more or less even playing field with everyone you are up against. You can use this to test even more abilities, and you know, to even see what your class feels like at level 50, because you'll be playing it essentially boosted level 50 with all of those abilities. In other words, this just lets you see absolutely everything in your kit as early as level 25, only halfway to 50. Number nine, the power pass. Right now we are in the beta of Lost Ark and in the beta we have a system where upon hitting level 50, you get given one power pass to bring a second character immediately up to level 50 as well. This could very well just be for the beta. So take it with a grain of salt. But this version of this may also exist as a thing in the main game. It might be that once you get one character 50, you also get another one. It's just, it's not the most obvious thing, but it exists. And if it continues to exist in the main game, that is just a free character boost for everyone. So here's hoping this sticks around because number 10 is alts, alts, alts. You're going to want some alts and alts stand for alternate characters. In Lost Ark end game almost Everything you are doing will have limits to how much of it you can do per day or per week. Your stronghold has regeneration, action points, your trade skills have stamina, and the three main sources of power gain in Endgame, which are Chaos Dungeons, Guardian Raids, and Una's Tasks, are all on daily reset timers, meaning that you literally cannot grind past this set amount unless you have an alt. Because in Lost Ark, your alts are not completely separated from your main, no. In Lost Ark, if your main character is level 50 and your alt is level 50, then your alt can do a second set of dailies, which you can actually then use to fuel your main. In other words, the more alts that you have, the better off your main will be. Up to a certain extent, obviously, there are diminishing returns. Alts are your friend. And honestly, for me, that's great news because I just cannot pick one class to stick to. All right, everyone, I have been Cotton Dinosaur and this has been the top 10 things that you didn't know that you could do in Lost Ark. I am really looking forward to this game and I hope you are too. Were you actually surprised to learn any of this information today? Do you have any more little interesting tidbits that I didn't mention that you'd like to share with the community down below in the comments? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.